Um, I see a lot of vintage Christmas ornaments. Oh, whoa. Welcome to episode 38. In this episode, we take a break from flipping our death pile to get back to our regular sourcing trips. We hit up some yard sales, estate sales, and a church rummage sale. We found a Holy Grail video game system from 1977, brand new in the box. I'd never even heard of the system before, but we found some really cool stuff, so let's get into it and show you what we got. We do ask that you pay for anything that's out here, out here, okay, and then bring it to your car because it gets kind of crazy in there. Okay. So if you want to see me, why don't you buy a I know, isn't it nice? Yeah. yeah so is that all your, your thinking? Right. Maybe you I'm about to buy that cart. Well, stuff. you know what? You should do it. It's gonna go. You yeah. Don't grab it. Yeah. So I want it. Yeah. yeah. Take it. I want that. Okay. okay. So, um, do you think there's anything else you want outside? Are we allowed to look in the bins? That's okay. But I don't want you to lose this. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, what's your name? Amy. Amy, I'm going to make you a tag. Okay. And do you want to run this to your car? Um, I don't want you to lose it. They're opening up. Can I come back and get it? Uh, it's it's going to go. So you, you, if I pay you know for it and leave it out here? It'll get taken. I can't babysit it. No, 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 that's fine. All right, you good with leaving it over there? Yeah, and that's fine. I want everything out of here. Good morning. You definitely taking it? I want to. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I will. <laughs> I'm with you. Good morning. Good morning. You got my mic? I got three, I think. Okay. Good. 
anything back there. It's not the price that you can take it out to the Well, you guys did a good job at this organizing this. Thank you. All right, we got here. Yes, here. Oh, and there's okay. carts back there. Yeah. And here is a label. You can put okay. your what name. Is, what is your name? And just Amy. give me a quick sub table before you leave. Okay. okay. And you can put it in a bag. Go ahead and put it in a bag for her or a box, whatever works. Okay. All right, let's go back here. I don't want to get away. She has paper. Set it on that far second. Far. Awesome. <laughs>
Yes, engineers. That's an old firm. They've been here a long time. Too much. 
All right, it is a Friday and I just got back from a bunch of sales, which is kind of unusual. There's not usually this many on a Friday, but um, I went to three. And we'll just start with, the first sale I went to was a rummage sale. And I think I spent too much money. I was just grabbing things and especially on the jewelry, was not looking at it closely. And some of the things are damaged or not that great and I probably spent too much, but We'll just take a look at the things I got. Um, shout out to Miss Susie. There were so many ties. Miss Susie is my son's uh, daycare provider and she knows a lot about ties. That is not my area of expertise, but I just picked one that looked kind of cool and it had a brand new Lord & Taylor tag. Lord & Taylor is not around anymore, so I knew it was gonna be vintage. It has like a peacock design by Liberty of London and actually this is about a $30 tie so I think I paid a dollar for that I also paid a dollar for this sack roots um, wallet and crossbody bag it's brand new I think that's like 20 or $30 but yeah only a dollar for that so I was doing okay on those things this was five dollars and it is a new in package mid-century Ronson um, dripless candle set Ronson is a good brand to keep your eye out for they make lighters and candles like these kinds of things very mid-century and they can be worth a lot if you're ever interested in learning more about a specific brand or item you can search let's just say vintage Ronson and then sort by highest sold and just see what the highest price Ronson and things go for. And then you'll know what definitely look out for. So this set is probably $20 or $25. But it's so cool and mid-century. I couldn't pass it up. I grabbed this box of new tag crate and barrel. They're like martini glasses and shaker ornaments. I think it's what is it, $5 for four. They're probably $15 a piece. Maybe for the whole set I'll get... I'll probably do the whole set together for $20 or $30. Then I got this whole sampler of Yankee Candle votives. We might just use these at the house. Um, but some discontinued Yankee Candle scents can go for a lot. Again, if you want to see what the highest selling Yankee Candle item is, just search it in eBay and then search by sold and then sort um, by highest price sold. So here's the jewelry. This is a Monet set. Monet is all over the place. I can't quite figure out what makes certain ones more valuable and other ones not as desirable. I'm not sure. Um, I thought this was a cool pin. This is like a, a giant articulated seahorse pendant. That's probably a 20 or $30 piece. Now, this didn't have a maker's mark on it, but it is heavy. And it is super cool. I really like it. Um, the thing I overlooked was it's missing a piece on the bracelet. It's missing a gem. But maybe I'll be able to find out who the maker is. I'm not sure. It's definitely higher quality than just your average necklace. Uh, I'm going to have to do some looking into it. The total I spent on these pieces of jewelry all together was $28. Uh, this pair of earrings is $925. So it is sterling. Uh, there's no other. Oh, there's some stuff on the. So there are some more markings, but I'm gonna have to look into that. It could be Taxco. Not sure. So possibly twenty dollars for those earrings. Now these were a surprise. 
I was trying to look and see ones that were marked. These ones are marked. This is a new brand for me, never heard of it. Heidi Day, hold on. Heidi Davis? Dows? Heidi Dows? D-A-U-S, that's what it is. These are good. These are probably, oop, if I don't break them. Probably $30 pair of earrings. And then this was in a Park and Lane box. So Park and Lane can be good. It feels like good quality. It feels like heavy. I'm not sure. But I didn't see a marking or anything on the clasp. So I don't know if it was just in this box or if it actually is a Park and Lane bracelet. If it is a Park and Lane bracelet, that could be a good one. That could be, you know, $40, $50. And then I bought this for $12. Probably overpaid for this too, but it is a um, jewelry box with a music box in it. So this right here is why I bought it. Rouge, Rouge, Rouge um, is the brand of the music box. And those can be good money. So there are some flaws on it that I didn't notice. There's some cracks in the top. And it does have the key, but it, I didn't notice the key top is broken off. But it does still work. But I was kind of disappointed by that. Okay, then I got this vintage Carolina starter windbreaker jacket with Carolina on the sleeve. Now, I think this is going to be a good one. This is probably a $60 to $80 jacket. If it had something on the back, it would be even more valuable, but it's just starter. But the thing on the sleeve makes it um, stand out, too. So that was a good buy. I think that was $3. And then this Lord & Taylor cotton nightgown. It does have some stains. I'm going to wash it, but... So there is a trend, it's called cottage core, which kind of is this like peasant look, more organic materials, cotton, kind of with the lace and the ribbons, and that is in right now. So cottage core, look it up if you're interested in finding out what other pieces fall into that category, but people are buying that, especially gunny sacks. If you think gunny sacks, 70s, that is what people are looking to buy. So my total spend, oh, and I, okay, I also got this because I just, I pick up random mugs that are, um, that are, I think are cool. Grab that one. And then this set of Fire King, uh, I don't know what they are, ramekin type things. I didn't even look at the pattern. I guess it's called Vegetable Harvest. Not worth a whole lot. Probably stick those in my shop. And then I got this piece of vintage Tupperware for $2. Now, I think there were pieces in it. Yeah, okay, so this is for deviled eggs. I don't know what this is worth. I'm going to look that up, but probably I would guess $15 to $20. All right, my next stop was an estate sale. It was a family-run estate sale. Waited outside for about 15 minutes before they opened. It looked like they were going to have some interesting things. I didn't get as much as I thought I was going to, but... That's all right. I still picked up some neat pieces. So these two vintage brass swan planters, those were $4. This copper kettle, there is a brand on the bottom. I'm going to have to look that up. Tagus? Tagus, Portugal? Copper things can be uh, really expensive, especially some copper pots. So if I see something copper for a couple dollars, I'm going to grab it. A Smith & Wesson in the box buckle for $6. I think this is a $40 to $50 buckle and it's brand new, 1975. Had to get the Christmas. There wasn't as much vintage Christmas as I was hoping. But vintage tinsel, or I guess this is a garland, but this is the tinsel. These can actually be quite desirable. I'm not sure about the garland, but we've sold, you know, like three vintage icicle tinsel things for, you know, $20 to $30. 
And typically at sales, these are going to be really, really cheap. 25 cents, 50 cents. Okay, then I got this for $2, all these wooden vintage ornaments. I am continuing to collect vintage Christmas, not only for my booth and for eBay, but I'm also going to be participating in a um, vintage Christmas flea market in December. So I'm stocking up a couple of boxes of these silk uh, unbreakable ornaments. So they're plastic. And they're very 70s, but they've got, yeah, this shiny kind of um, strings on them. So these aren't super expensive or anything, but they're going to be a part of my vintage Christmas sale. And then this Margaret Furlong ornament. We have sold actually that particular one before. I think that one was worth a little bit more. This one's like a $20 ornament, but they're made out of like a bisque material. And yeah, this one's new in the box. So that was a dollar. I'm gonna uncover the clothes. I gotta get rid of some of this stuff. All right, so looking at the clothes. Again, I'm just experimenting with clothing. This is kind of a new area for me, so I might take some wins and losses, but these pants were two or three dollars a piece. Um, Mountain Hardware, that's a good brand. Hiking pants, these are probably $20 to $30 pants, and then these North Face hiking pants, again, probably like $20 or $30. And then these two Pendleton shirts. Pendleton is a great brand, high-end, um, not high-end, but like mid-range, I guess. Like these are $40 shirts all day. That might be a hole. So that might be, see? Yeah, hole. Okay, so that is a $0 shirt, but that's a $40 shirt. Then two of these Columbia long sleeve hiking shirts. These were two bucks a piece. This one's brand new. I'm probably gonna put them in a lot, two for $40. And then underneath it all, there's this vintage crop sweatshirt. Like how 70s, 80s is this? High Kappa Alpha cropped short sleeve sweatshirt. Somebody's going to want that. So total spend of the estate sale was, I think, $34, $38. Somewhere that was like a little less than $40. All right, last stop of the day was in my neighborhood. I just saw it when I was driving home and stopped in. I did not film it, but I spent about $25 on this group of items. Uh, so in the back got two pillows and they are Bratz pillows these are from the early 2000s apparently what I've learned is if they have this MGA marking that means they're like the original uh, Bratz from the early 2000s and these pillows are selling for like I don't know, $40 a piece Bratz especially the dolls can go for good money, so keep your eye out on the original, for the original Bratz from the early 2000s. This right here I was super excited about. I knew what it was right when I saw it. It is a glass cookie jar. And these are from the mid-century time period. And they are called Bartlett Collins. That's the brand, and they are different color, like retro, really bright orange, really bright green, flower, daisies, like think 60s, 70s designs. And these are quite collectible. I think it depends on the color and design, but um, there's definitely buyers out there for those. I think that's like maybe 80 to $100 for that uh, cookie jar. So I also got some couple pieces of glass. These are two perfume bottles. And this one is older. I think this is like pink depression glass. And this one is an Art Deco style, but it's a modern rendition by, yeah, Silvestri. So I just think the perfume metals are pretty. They're not particularly expensive or anything, probably 20 to $30 each. And then this piece right here was really interesting. It's a fish or a whale 
um, with like a, I guess it's eating a fish. It looks like water's on the top and it has a fish that's got its mouth wide open. I think it's a whale, but it's really neat. So I really like that piece. I don't know much about it, the maker or anything, so we'll have to do some research on that. And I have no idea why I bought these. I just thought they were interesting. They're like a, a what is it called? bookshelf or uh, bookends. And they're almost in like a Colosseum column type design. And they're like heavy plastic. I don't know anything about them. But I just decided to buy them. And then there is this really neat purse. It's like made out of plastic but it's almost 3d and it says Anton Pieck and it's got this quilted inside so again I don't know anything about that either but yeah I spent about four dollars on each individual piece. so I found some interesting things Okay, here is the video game system that we found. It is a fantastic Marame 2000 for four to two players on your home TV screen. Enjoy tennis, hockey, squash, practice. I don't know what practice really means, but I looked on the box. This is from 1977. I, I had never heard of this system before. Um, it is brand new in the box, which is amazing. I think it was made in Korea pull it out and you see you got it still has the plastic on it You've got two little controllers here in excellent shape like I said it doesn't look like it's ever been used there's still plastic on the uh, control panel here but I just thought this was super interesting but I, like I said I've never heard of it before so it says made in Korea where did it have the date on it? Mm -mm -mm. Definitely said 1977 on it somewhere. If I can find it. Uh, if I can't find it, you guys are just going to have to trust me on that one. Because it definitely said 1977 on it. Mm. Well, I'm not doing it right now. But anyway. These kind of things you rarely ever find. In six years, I've never seen or even heard of this system. Uh, you definitely don't find brand new ones, unused, new in the box. But uh, anyway, just wanted to get this in the video. This is from a different yard sale than the other ones we went to. But uh, this was kind of a standalone thing. So I just wanted to throw it in here so you could guys get a look at it. As always, visit our store at CoastalResaleTherapy.com. The link will be posted in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.